Okay, everybody, we're back again, and we're going to try and repair this circuit board. It may not be damaged, but we're just going to touch up some of the solder traces. I've got a soldering iron, wet sponge, desoldering braid, and um, the temperature on the, the um, iron is about 650. And just an old paper mat so you don't damage your desk. Um, so let's get to work. First thing I'm going to do is um, reflow these ICs, these surface bound ICs, which um, are notorious for going bad. I prefer through hole <sighs> chips because they actually hold up better under vibration, but these are cheaper because you can assemble them um, with automation, with, with robots. So you just, what you do, you essentially flow the solder over over the pins of this 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 chip right here. And it kind of it doesn't matter. You just what you're trying to do is get the solder to flow under the IC pins. So um, you know any joints that have cracked through aging uh, can be repaired. And F11 is a communication error, which is why we're zooming in on these because. This, is this going to be the device that communicates with the rest of the machine? So communication, the odds of having a problem here, kind of high, but you know. Now you don't want to go too long because you can damage these, these devices. They're sensitive. Well, let's see, we'll get some desoldering braids there. And what that will do is soak up any uh, the solder now, which is on this device. So you just kind of gently place your iron over the desoldering braid. And anyone really can do this. It's not hard. It's just like anything, time and patience, right? Not the kind of thing I wanted to do on a Sunday, but you know, you got to wash your clothes, right? Or go buy a new machine, but I even wonder if you go buy a new machine, is the quality any better? I think it's worse. I just don't think people put enough care into manufacturing of goods the way they used to. Oops. Okay. Well, or maybe it's just to save costs. In a way, all of this. Okay, so I would say that side's pretty good. I'll go check it with the, uh, I have a magnifying glass ring light above, above us here, so I'll probably, I can probably zoom all of you in. Or maybe I can't, not while I'm filming. Okay, I was hoping you could get a close up of this. I'm gonna go a little harder, I'm at 650. I'm gonna go up to 675 just because it's not quite getting as hot as I like. Watch, I went to 690. Because you see, what'll happen is that the soldering braid will take a bit of heat too. There we go. You shouldn't be waiting for a while for the pins to get hot. You kind of want to get in and get out. Now the risk doing this is you could destroy the board I've always been pretty lucky with these things. But you really need to check every pin, make sure nothing's shorted out, because that's where the damage can happen. It, again, it's not hard, it's just time and patience. That's my dryer. Simpler, that's just an old mechanical controller. Nice to have the background music that's not too jarring for this sort of general work. Okay, there we go. A little bit of rosin smoke. Okay, let's see. Here we go. And we're just about there on that side, I would say. Let's now spin the board around. And we'll get in here. And 
Now maybe other people have better techniques, but this is the way I've always done it. I'm not saying there's any right way to do this, and it may not even be this. You're just trying to find, trying to take care of things that could cause issues. So there's no guarantee this will fix it, but you know, if we look at that IC, it actually looks pretty good now. Let me just check it with my magnifier. Looking under the magnifying glass, I don't see... You want to tilt the board on its side too, so you can um, look on the sides of the IC. Make sure that there's no solder, bridge solder connections. Oh, okay, there's one there. See right here? Let me see. We can, yeah, right there. See, uh, um, right in here, there's a little bridge. So I'm gonna clean that up. I still think it's giving us trouble. Well, I cleaned it up, but it looks to me like it's 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 the solder's behind the device. So I'm just gonna re-solder this one. In worst case, like I said, we're gonna be buying a new board on one of our favorite online uh, reseller places which thank goodness for those right because now this stuff's a lot cheaper but you know oftentimes it's the simple stuff so you try to you try that's all you can do always try right it'll work because I think the problem is when you have a washing machine out everything kind of stops unless you have an infinite supply of clothes I don't know what's going on with 2020 everything around me has been giving me trouble Either it's work-related issues or I'm gonna see all that. Oh darn it! It's still, it's still a little bridge there. That one pin in the middle is not cooperating at all. So here we go again. And that one I think is better though. Reflowing these isn't always easy. You just patience. Yeah, I've had everything go out on me this year. It's uh. The 20, fun of 2020, I guess. I don't know. Washing machines. Um, work. And a whole bunch of end of year stuff to do. I can't believe it's December already. I think we can, now I can still see it. My eyes aren't so good, so, you know, it's hard to see, but I think it's just trying to get it hotter. You can do this, by the way. I, don't, I hope this isn't scaring anybody. It's really doable. It's just, yeah, it's still there. It's just a little patience, that's all. That, to me, looks clean. Oh, maybe it's right there. not making me real comfortable so I'm just gonna 
I'm going to try and heat this up again. It's like the fifth, one, two, three, between pins five and six on this side. It's like right here. Sometimes you have to like zoom in on the problem. You can't. There we go. So you see how much solder I'm putting on? A ton, right? So that'll hopefully soak up any solder that's um, stuck behind the pins of this device. By the way, the parts that go on these are very low cost. You, I know you pay a lot for a washing machine, but this is probably a $1 device, if that. But they program it right with their firmware to control the washing machine, so you couldn't just buy another part and put it in because it's programmed. It was very proprietary. This like, is probably just like a mini computer, microcontroller. Okay, so, um, that looks good now. I think we got it, folks. There's a little bridge there I'm a little nervous about. I'll check these on the, um, on that magnifier. You gotta really be sure, because you don't want any shorts. I think it's okay. I mean, you've got to be careful with your own intuition because sometimes you want it to be okay because it's kind of tedious work, right? I do not see anything on this. So let's... So then, I feel good about it, I think. <laughs> There's one little connection I'd really like to touch up that I don't like the look of. It's right here. It's, surf it's on the top, so I'm just going to put a little bit of solder there. Because you don't want to remove so you've just the key with these is you want to put enough solder down to um, so the solder flows underneath. But you don't want you don't want so much solder removed that there's pins just kind of touching, right? Well, that looks better to me. Yeah, I think that's okay. I don't feel great about it, but I don't think it's going to blow up. I guess we'll find out. <sighs> okay, then there's these. These are easier, and they probably don't need doing. But, you know, anything surface mount, and really you should check all this stuff, but this is a good first step. I like to, I like to just reflow, because uh, this is going to be where your failure points are on a circuit board. You know, it surprises me. In fact, the pins are so far spaced apart, you almost don't need to use the soldering braid to soak up any solder on these bigger devices. I mean, you can see I've bridged a few, but yeah, these play a lot nicer. Let's see, I'm just going to soak up this one here. So. That actually looks pretty good to me. I like that one. Let's do this one, this little one in the corner. Okay, let's do that one. A lot of these are basically just little devices that let them talk to the, all the sensors on the machine. And these high-speed machines need a lot of sensors. 
because, you know, I mean, you're spinning a motor at very high RPMs. Plus, you've got all kinds of vibration sensing. Pretty cool technology, but it certainly made keeping a... Well, that one looks... Keeping a washing machine on the road is um, a lot more work. And I'm not sure it's good for the society because then you end up with people throwing these things out, right? Getting a new machine, which isn't good for the environment. Okay, what else have we got? Anything under here that we want to touch up? The other thing it could be is the board might be fine. And you might have a... Um, a loose wire in the connector. I mean, there's a lot that can go wrong because those wires are flexing just like um, everything else. That's, um, I'm surprised they don't use more glue like silicone or some kind of adhesive on the board to stop these components from shaking too much. I've seen in some applications components physically fall off the board from all the uh, from all the vibration but I don't see anything here so we've done that I would almost say if I look under the microscope here for the lens just looking for anything obvious Yeah, I don't see anything, folks. Okay, um... Let's see. Yeah, I know, I'm still obsessed with this big chip. Just a few that are like... I don't know, make me feel uncomfortable. check all this stuff. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You're just looking for any solder traces that might be touching. Maybe I don't see anything. Careful with these things. The other thing you can do is gently touch each pin and heat it up. Anyway, I think for now, I'm happy with this board. So, um, I think I'm just gonna put it in the uh, washing machine and see how she does. Talk to you all soon.